This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product. SNC Instruction Sheet 811-505. You can download these instructions at snc.com. The Loadbuster Load Brake Tool is used to switch equipment that operates at high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. The Load Buster tool must only be used for specific switching applications that are within the ratings of the tool selected. The Load Buster tool ratings are listed on a ratings label attached to the chassis of the tool. Prior to using the Load Buster tool, be sure you have read and you understand the application notes and operating considerations sections of the written instructions because certain application restrictions apply, especially with regard to single pole switching of ungrounded primary three-phase transformers or banks of single-phase transformers. Load Buster, the SNC load brake tool, is the original lightweight, easy to use, portable load brake tool. It brings load switching capability through 34.5 kV and 600 amperes nominal, 900 amperes maximum to your overhead distribution system. The Load Buster tool works by providing a current path between the upper contact and pull ring of a hook equipped distribution device. When operated, the load current is diverted through the Load Buster tool and interrupted within. We will demonstrate operation on an SMD20 power fuse but the procedure is equally applicable to fuse cutouts, disconnects, power fuses, and fuse limiters with an attachment hook at the upper end of the device and a pull ring on the device's switch blade or fuse tube. For usual operating conditions, the Load Buster tool is fastened to a universal pole not less than six feet, 183 centimeters long, with the frame of the tool in line with the pole. Before operating, check for proper resetting of the Load Buster tool by extending the tool about three inches by hand. Throughout this travel, an increasing spring resistance should be felt. When operating from a bucket truck, stay at least five feet, 1.5 meters, below the device and in front of the fuse cutouts, fuse limiters, and vertically mounted disconnects and fuses. When disconnects are mounted inverted, approach the attachment hook from the hinge end staying well below the device to be open so excessive horizontal force is not exerted on the insulator. The Load Buster tool has an anchor which attaches to the attachment hook of the operating device and a pull ring hook which attaches to the device's pull ring. Step 1. Reach across in front of the SMD20 fuse mounting with the Load Buster tool and hook the anchor on the far side of the SMD20 mounting. The Load Buster tool should never be attached with its anchor hooked on the closest side of the fuse cutout or other device. Attaching the tool in this manner would not only obscure the operator's line of vision, but it could also result in placing a bending stress on the tool and make disengagement difficult. Step 2. Swing the Load Buster tool toward the SMU20 fuse itself and pass the Load Buster tool pull ring hook through the pull ring on the fuse. The pull ring latch will deflect and, upon complete entry of the pull ring, will spring back, locking the Load Buster tool to the pull ring. The Load Buster tool is now connected across the upper contact of the SMD20 power fuse. Step 3. To open the circuit, operate the Load Buster tool with a firm, steady pull until it is extended to its maximum length. Avoid jerking and hesitating. The resetting latch will keep it open. Generally, there will be no indication of circuit interruption, but minor arcing may be noted at the pull ring hook and at the anchor, particularly when interrupting load currents approach the rating of the tool. The only sound will be that of the Load Buster tool tripping. Step 4. To detach the Load Buster tool after circuit interruption, first raise it slightly and disengage the anchor from the attachment hook. When the Load Buster tool is raised, the open gap distance is reduced. Careless manipulation could decrease the open gap to the point where flashover will occur. Next, bring the fuse toward its fully open position. 
Remove the load buster tool from the pull ring by turning the pole. This will deflect the pull ring latch to release the pull ring. On devices where the fuse will drop fully open by gravity, it may be preferred to remove the load buster tool by rolling it off both the attachment hook and pull ring at the same time, merely by twisting the pole after the load buster tool has been tripped and fully extended. To perform this operation easily and smoothly, always roll the load buster tool so it rotates in an upward direction. Step five, to reset the load buster tool for the next operation, extend the tool slightly and lift the resetting latch with your thumb. With the latch up, press down on the inner tube assembly until the tool is closed completely so the trigger can reset itself. When reset properly, the orange paint on the inner tube assembly will no longer be visible. Check for proper resetting by extending the tool about three inches. An increasing spring resistance should be felt. The method of operation works equally well with cutouts, load buster disconnect switches, and most other devices with a hook and pull ring. Load buster tools manufactured after March 2003 are equipped with a non-resettable operation counter that lets you monitor the use of your tools to make more informed decisions with regard to inspection and maintenance. The operation counter is built into the load buster tools silencer and can be easily added to existing tools. If you have any questions about load buster tool, visit our website at snc.com.